Okay, good afternoon. Today we have the configuration of our Cascade uh, configuration system. And this is our next topic. Our uh, next uh, system is uh, composed of a uh, direct contact Cascade condenser. And this is considered as a, an open system wherein the refrigeration system uh, use only one refrigerant okay uh, it is considered direct contact and an open system because there will be a mixture of refrigerant in the plastic condenser this one at constant pressure so the refrigerant coming from the high pressure loop at points it en enters your casket condenser as well as the refrigerant coming from the low pressure loop at point two at a uh, uh, superheated vapor condition will also enter your casket condenser and exchange heat all of those liquid since it has weight will settle at the bottom and it allows only vapor region which is considered saturated at point three to go up and enter at the suction point of your compressor so that is uh, the uh, procedure Again, cascade refrigeration system is applied or applied when the the uh, evaporator temperature or the evaporator temperature requirements is around negative 100 degrees Celsius. So that is the application of your cascade condenser. If if it is not uh, negative 100 let's say negative 40 you can solve that by simple vapor compression system however again uh, we, we are going to adjust negative 100 degrees Celsius because we don't have available data in your table and chart uh, that we can use to perform this uh, system Later on, this 100 degrees Celsius is also adjusted to negative 40, which is the, uh, the minimum temperature that you can find in your table, so that we can perform the, this activity. This, this activity is uh, activity number 13, uh, direct contact casket condenser refrigeration system. Okay, so let us consider the this as your low pressure loop, the other one is high pressure loop. And uh, as state, stated here, we have already the numbering. Again, at point one is considered saturated vapor refrigerant. That is the minimum requirement as it enters uh, compressor A. Okay. And when you expand this, uh, compress this uh, isentropically, it will change to superheated vapor. High pressure, high temperature, at lower loop or lower low pressure loop condition. It will now go to your cascade condenser, which is an open system, and mix with the refrigerant inside. And again, oh, uh, since the superheated vapor is submerged with the liquid, some of the superheated will convert it into liquid, it says several at the bottom to get the fluid. Some of them is converted once again into saturated vapor. Upon 
the its exit to the castle through the exit. So I'll point to you this once again. Saturate the detail. But this time the the pressure of this is already the pressure first part to your cascade condenser. Now if it is not given the cascade or pressure cascade condenser is equal to the square root of the pressure of your condenser, this one, uh, multiply that with the pressure of the evaporator. If it is not given, okay, then again the saturated vapor whose pressure is correspond to the cascade condenser will go to your compressor and compress it once again. Convert that into super vapor vapor. High pressure, high temperature at high pressure look condition. High pressure condition. We will now go to your condenser, you reject it, and then you will convert superheated vapor into saturated liquid. Okay. Then pass to your expansion device at constant enthalpy, thereby changing this saturated liquid at high pressure at temperature into wet mixture. Okay. So when this wet mixture pass or enters your cascade condenser, then once again mix with the superheated vapor coming from the, the uh, low pressure loop, the pressure tape, all liquid settle at the bottom, all vapor going up and enters point 0.3. However, at point 0.7, this wet mixture will now convert it once again into saturated liquid. Saturated liquid. You still remember it in the video. We, we have changed the video. We are using this technology. But this time, the cascade condensers actually heat exchanger. That will absorb the heat coming from this very, very low temperature, negative 100 degrees Celsius. And then, and then discharge it at point 0.3 uh, 0.3 will uh, enter to your, to your compressor D and later on compress and drop it again before going to condenser. All of this heat coming from the low pressure now, 100 degrees Celsius, is later on discharged using your condenser. Okay, so again, I repeat there's no such thing as uh, 40 degrees condenser and then we have negative. Uh, 100 degrees Celsius that can uh, uh, furnished by an ordinary vapor compression system. That is why we are going to use this cascade condenser so that there is uh, an absorb uh, or there is a exchange of heat from the low, low, very, very low, low temperature coming in this 100 degrees Celsius going up to 40. So the temperature coming from the, the heat coming from the very very low temperature uh, will be uh, stored in your cascade condenser before it will go into compressor B that will later on convert uh, both mass and heat coming from cascade condenser into uh, uh, superheated vapor high pressure at temperature before it will go to your condenser. Okay. So at point 7, it is once again con converted to saturated liquid. We pass again to your expansion device at constant enthalpy, thereby changing once again into wet mixture before it will go to your evaporator. And then the cycle continues. So this is the, uh, the uh, simple schematic uh, presentation of the block diagram of your cascade generation system. The change of heat as well as the change of phase is already there. Okay. For your pH diagram, this is your pH diagram. Uh, 
paano hindi condition of the refrigerant, we have now force the condenser line at 40. We have the intermediate pressure correspond to your casting condenser. And then we have the evaporator. So if this is your evaporator line, then this is, let's say, negative 100 degrees Celsius. And we have here the pressure of your cascade condenser. And then you have your pressure for static pure 40 at, uh, at, uh, at uh, correspond to 40 degrees Celsius. That is the uh, correspond to your condenser pressure. So at point one, it is considered saturated. So this one is considered lying on the saturated vapor line. You compress this until until it will cross to the pressure correspond to your cascade condenser. So okay, okay, changing now saturated to superheated vapor at point two. This superheated vapor will once again change into saturated upon going at going out to your classic condenser to point three. And then it will enter once again to your compression beam and later convert that into superheated isentropically isentropically to point four. Okay. Now at point four we will go to condenser and the heat is ejected to the atmosphere. Change changing now superheated vapor to saturated liquid 0.5. Okay. And then it will go to your expansion device at constant entropy, so line going down, straight vertically downward until it cross pressure correspond to your cascade condenser. This is your six. Now point seven. As I've said, all liquid settle down, converting wet mixture into pure liquid. So, upon rolling out uh, to 0.7, it is once again saturated liquid. So, this is your 0.7. And then for the next expansion device, at constant entropy once again. Straight line going down until it cross, cross pressure over span to negative 100. And this is your your 8 now, going to 1, will change wet mixture condition to 0.1 by heat absorption coming from your fluid to your evaporator. So that is your schematic uh, pH diagram of your cascade refrigerator system. Okay, we can easily compute this. Let's say we, we have the given capacity, let's say 100 tons, then you can automatically automatically compute for for your masses. However, again, uh, since we 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 we, we, are, we are not going to uh, compute this uh, problem because this is at negative 100 degrees Celsius, and again, you don't have negative 100 degrees Celsius in your table in your chart. So all we have to do is to convert this into the uh, uh, value available into your chart and table. Your value uh, available in your chart is negative 40. Uh, in your table is negative 40. In your chart is around negative 60. So in your table, we are going to adjust this 100 degrees into negative 40 so that we can compute and perform this activity, this activity uh, number 13, just to perform the uh, system using uh, cascade, uh, open cascade condenser or direct contact cascade condenser. Okay.